Welcome to The Legal Corner. I'm Tim Burke, General Counsel with REMAX Estate Properties. The fire hardening and defensible space form has recently been updated. It's important to understand if this form applies to your client, and if it does apply to your client, how to fill out the form. Let's get started. On June 21, 2022, the California Association of Realtors released a revision to the Fire Hardening and Defensible Space Form, or FHDS. The first step in using the new FHDS is to determine if the form even applies to your client. It's important to understand, like the TDS and SPQ, the FHDS is to be filled out by your client. In regards to the fire hardening disclosure, it will only have to be made if any of the following apply. One, the property contains one to four units. And two, the seller is required to complete a real estate transfer disclosure statement, which is car form TDS. Or three, the property is located in either a high fire or very high fire hazard severity zone. And four, the improvements on the property were constructed before January 1 of 2010. If any of the four conditions above are not met, the fire hardening disclosure does not have to be done in paragraph two of the form. Of course, if any of the conditions apply, the client will have to answer the questions to the extent they are, quote, aware. Moving on to the defensible space compliance. A client will only have to comply with the defensibility space law if all of the following conditions are met. One, the property contains one to four units. Two, the seller is required to complete a real estate transfer disclosure statement. Or three, the property is located in either a high or very high fire hazard severity zone. If any of the three conditions is not met, the client does not have to complete paragraph three. The client will inevitably ask, how do they determine if they are in a high or very high fire zone? The suggestion from CAR and EPLA is that you check the NHD report or call your local fire authority. CAL FIRE also has a website that you can check, which you can see on your screen right now. If your client has to make the defensibility space disclosure, what are they supposed to do in paragraph three? In paragraph 3A, the client needs to disclose whether they are subject to a local ordinance in the city of Los Angeles and county of LA, property in high and very high fire zones are subject to defensible space ordinances. But your client will need to confirm that fact for themselves. It's important to note that both entities do these inspections in the spring and issue violations. As a point of practice, please ask your client whether or not they have received any such violations as they should be disclosed. In paragraph 3B, seller will have to note whether or not they are aware or not aware of compliance. If we look at paragraph 3C, this is the agreement regarding whose responsibility it will be to bring the property into compliance. It can be buyer or seller or the seller's duty pursuant to local law. This agreement will vary depending on the facts and circumstances of the particular transaction. If we look at paragraph 4, this addresses the possibility that the seller has the final inspection report. The seller can attach the report or provide information on where a copy of the report can be obtained. The old FHDS was confusing and I believe this new form is more intuitive and straightforward. Mm -hmm.